As we head into fall and winter, I think it is pretty essential that you know how to make a classic vegetable soup. This is the kind of soup that is light and fresh and made from just really simple everyday veggies. There is nothing complicated or hard to find, and I'll even give you some tips in the video for swapping in frozen veggies to make things even easier. So let me show you how to make it. To get started, peel and slice four carrots, though I often get asked if you really need to peel the carrots, and the answer is no. You can certainly leave the outer skin on the carrots, but if you do, just make sure that you've given them a really good wash and scrub to remove any remnant debris. For me, I think peeling carrots is just somewhat of a learned behavior, as my mom always peeled her carrots, so I got into the habit of peeling my carrots. It's funny how that works. But I'd love to hear if you are pro-carrot peeling or not. Who knows, maybe I am the oddball out. But either way, once your carrots are sliced up, add them to a prep bowl. Next, slice up three ribs of celery. And if you see a not so pretty part on my celery, don't you worry, I removed that before placing the celery in the prep bowl. I should also mention that you can place the celery on top of the carrots in the prep bowl as we'll add them at the same time to the soup. And then the last item for this standard mirepoix mix is a medium onion, so go ahead and dice that up. This simple combination of carrots, celery, and onion imparts that cozy flavor base to all soups that it's added to, including my cabbage soup and lentil soup, if you've tried those, and now this vegetable soup. And you can just add the onion on top of the celery and carrots and then set this bowl aside. Next, go ahead and smash and peel four garlic cloves for the soup. I usually peel the garlic cloves now while I'm at my cutting board and then mince them directly into the soup but if you'd like to mince them into a small prep bowl ahead of time, you can do that as well. And then peel and chop three yellow potatoes, such as Yukon Gold potatoes. These are waxier than say russet potatoes, which are more starchy. And russets would be more likely to break apart in this vegetable soup, while Yukon Golds hold their shape better after boiling. I also love how the potatoes add more heft and heartiness to this soup. So even though it's a light and fresh soup, it will definitely fill you up as well, making it the perfect vegetarian main kind of soup. In terms of dicing up the potatoes, I'll usually just slice them in half, then those halves in half, then lay them flat on my cutting board and cut across in both directions to get a reasonably small dice. Just think of bite-sized pieces when you're cutting them up and then add them to a separate prep bowl. The last veggie you need to prep is one and a half cups of chopped fresh green beans. Now, you can also use frozen green beans in this recipe and add them at the end with the frozen corn and frozen peas. But I feel like fresh green beans just stay a little bit crisper in the soup, which I prefer. And again, I just chop them up into bite-sized pieces. The quantity doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a little bit more or a little bit less of any of these ingredients, it really won't make or break the recipe but I'll measure the green beans just to make sure I have one and a half cups, and I do. So now we're ready to whip up this soup. Heat a large pot or Dutch oven over medium high heat and add two tablespoons of olive oil, and then dump in your prep bowl of onions, celery, and carrots. Saute these for four to five minutes until they're softened, then mince the four garlic cloves straight into the pot and add a half a teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. The Italian seasoning really amps up the flavor in this soup and takes what would otherwise be a kind of bland and boring soup into something really robust in flavor and very appetizing. I'm also gonna be honest with you guys in that I accidentally added one teaspoon of black pepper instead of a half a teaspoon while filming. And I have to tell you, I really liked the extra peppery flavor. So feel free to add a bit more pepper if you'd like as well. Add your other prep bowl of green beans and chopped potatoes, along with two 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes. Now I'm using regular diced tomatoes today, but you can also use fire roasted diced tomatoes for an extra smoky flavor. Add two bay leaves and then pour in six to eight cups of vegetable broth, depending on how brothy you'd like this soup to be. And I do recommend a high quality vegetable broth because with such simple ingredients in the soup, the broth becomes a star ingredient in its own right. Give that a stir, bring it to a boil, then reduce the heat to low, cover the pot, and simmer it for about 20 minutes or until the potatoes are just fork tender. While the soup is simmering away, I'm gonna prep the final two ingredients that we'll add at the end, which is about a quarter cup of roughly chopped parsley, and two to three tablespoons of juice from one freshly squeezed lemon. 
These two ingredients really elevate the soup, and I think the reason that I never liked vegetable soup until I made it myself at home was that I felt the flavor was always sorta of just flat and boring. But the lemon juice in particular really adds a bright punch of flavor at the end, so I'd say it's 100% necessary. All right, it's been about 20 minutes and my potatoes are now fork tender, so it's time to add the frozen ingredients, and that includes one cup of frozen peas and one cup of frozen corn. If you wanted to add frozen green beans instead of fresh, you'd add them at this stage now as well. And while you could technically add a bag that's a mix of frozen carrots, peas, and corn, I do feel that adding fresh carrots at the beginning imparts more flavor. But again, feel free to flex this recipe to best suit you. Boil the frozen veggies for another five minutes or so until they're just cooked through, then turn off the heat and add the fresh lemon juice and parsley. You can see the steam wafting off the pot and on a cold fall or winter night, this vegetable soup is just so warming and nourishing. You can also see from this very large stove cast iron pot of mine that this soup makes a large quantity, about eight servings if you poured in eight cups of vegetable broth. So you should have plenty to enjoy for dinner and then several servings to enjoy again in the future. After you've plucked out the two bay leaves, because no one wants to accidentally eat those, ladle the soup into serving bowls and make sure you get a good mix of both the veggies and broth. If you're serving this up for guests, you can also make this vegetable soup a little more fancy with a small sprinkle of extra chopped parsley on top. In terms of storage, this soup will last for four to five days in the fridge, so you can enjoy it multiple nights in a row. And if you're planning on storing it in the fridge, you can use a WEC jar like this or my favorite glass lock storage containers. If I'm freezing something in a WEC jar, I'll use the glass lid with the silicone seals and clamps. But if I'm storing it in the fridge for a few days, I often use these plastic lids as they're just easier to pop on and off. And if you'd like to freeze leftovers, they'll last for up to three months in the freezer, and you can freeze them in the glass jars as long as you leave space at the top for expansion, or you can freeze them in my favorite super cube trays. The beauty of these trays is that the quantity is marked on the inside, and you can leave the soup frozen in the trays with the lid on top, or pop them out and store the frozen soup cubes in a plastic bag. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vegetable soup recipe, and if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends who love healthy soup recipes, and I will see you again in the next video.